Jenny for acrylicpouring.com and today I'm going to do a pour that's inspired by blackbirds and other birds that have iridescent feathers. A few weeks ago I did a pour that was inspired by the gorgeous colors in boulder opal and it just helped to, to think about something that I love and then look at pictures and get inspired by those colors so that's what I've been doing with birds today and I mixed up some colors I'll show you how to do that in this video and then I'm gonna do a dirty pour with these colors my recipe is pretty easy it's three parts paint to one part pouring medium I use as pouring medium half Liquitex pouring medium and half GAC 800. After I stir those in, so three parts paint, one part pouring medium, then I thin it out with a solution that I make that is about uh, two thirds to a quarter pouring medium and the rest of it water. So I thin it out with that. To make it easy, I'm going to put 1.5 ounces oops, of this paint. Now I zero out the scale so it goes back to zero. And I'm going to put in 0.5 ounces of pouring medium. So that is a three to one ratio. So that means I'll point, I'll put 0.25 of the Liquitex and then the rest up to 0.5 will be GAC 800. There we go. Now I thin it out with the thinning solution. There we go. I want you to be able to see what it looks like when it hits the top of the paint because that's what I'm looking for is how big of a, what, I, what soap makers call how big of a trace how well it holds its uh, peaks there. All right, that is ready. So it ended up being one ounce, 1.1 ounces of that thinning solution. Now that I've got all the colors mixed, I'm gonna add, I've gotten them all to the same consistency. I'm now gonna add some 100% silicone oil, treadmill silicone to each color so on this small I usually try not to do it on canvas because I don't want to drop any of the silicone on the canvas so this little one I'll do one drop maybe one two drops and same with that this one maybe three The colors I mixed, I chose a mix of transparent. These are transparent, these three. And the rest are, are, are opaque or like this color I mixed, uh, semi-opaque. Semi this is a mix of Prussian blue and uh, phthalo green blue. So... These are the colors. They'll be listed in the video description. And I've added the silicone oil. Now I'm going to pour a dirty cup. So I want to keep the colors distinct. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get that by layering the colors. 
um, and pouring a, pouring a little from up high, but when you pour from higher up, it mixes the colors. So that's why I want to layer for the most part into the cup. Okay, I've got my flip cup ready. I forgot to stir the silicone, so that's something new for me. Usually I stir the silicone just a little. Um, I forgot to do that, so we'll see how this flip cup turns out. I kind of threw it down on there because to get a little bit of movement. I'll sit for a second. All this is falling down, uh, and so I'm gonna flip that cup, and then I pour it over just so it's not a one big blob of color in the middle. That's what I usually do. Give this a little stir. A small cup. Do a ribbon across there. Ooh, that's got some of that pretty blue. Maybe. Something like that. Alright, and save this one. This is a lot of paint. A lot of that is going to blow off. But I would rather have too much paint than too little paint. That is one of the most common mistakes people make is not using enough paint. And then you have to over tilt your canvas. So I use a torch. Uh, try to use a torch. There we go. And I hold it pretty high up. And I use this before I tilt because I like larger cells. And when you do it before you tilt, these cells that I'm getting will stretch and become larger. Also, just letting your paint sit for a little while, you will get cells that will then stretch out. So being patient here is always a help. So now I'm going to tilt it. And once this paint is a little thinner, meaning I've poured some of it off, ooh, it's kind of looking feathery, um, it will make more, more cells. I really like that purpley, this ribbon I put in, so I'm gonna stretch it a little far. All right, that's where we are right now. I don't like this <coughs> blobs, so I'm gonna see if I get cells when I torch it again. And if not, I'll pour a ribbon over it. Oh, 
I might get cell. Oh, I'm getting cells. Yes, that's, oh, that's pretty. Look out. Right, that's real pretty right there. And it takes a little while on the torchin. You, you're wanting to heat that paint up. And so you might be doing this a while and think, oh, it's not going to sell. But as long as you keep it from burning the paint, just warm it up and you may get cells with some patience. That's pretty, very feathery. Still that, but I'm afraid if I pour something there, then I'll lose this here. I'm gonna think about it. Let it sit for a little while and come back and see what it's done. Then decide. 